Alright, it's an Action 104 bonus video! Woohoo! Uh, we're gonna talk about the history of Active Enterprises and part of the history behind the uh, NES Action 52 game. Now, uh, Active Enterprises, we think, was formed in 89. That's at least what they claimed that the uh, company was made in. Uh, however, this is information came from 93, so they might have been made in 93 or before. But uh, the company was formed by both Vince Perry and Roll Gamilia, and it was based out of Florida. However, it also had a base in the Bahamas. They released Action 52 for the NES in 1991. No sales figures are actually out there for this game, but uh, it's fairly rare. I mean, you can find it on eBay for between $50 to $100. It's not the most rare game, but it's not exactly something you're going to find in a flea market all the time either. Uh, Active Enterprises trademark for the Cheetah Men in Action 52 in uh, 92. And in 93, Active Enterprises had contracted out another company called Farsight Technologies to create Action 52 for the Sega Genesis. Now, in 93, it also released and published that cartridge as well. Now, the release of Action 52 for the Super Nintendo was also planned, but it actually never came out. Now, neither did Action Game Master or the Sports 5 games, which are other games planned for the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Now, in 1994, Active Enterprises actually left the market, and it's they were pretty well gone by 94, so they actually had a fairly short existence. Um, what we do know is that they did merge with Ivan Kulikovsky's company, Voice Technologies, and then afterwards Vince Perry left the company. Now, the amazing thing about Act Action 52 for the regular Nintendo is that there is actually a contest to win $104,000. You know, you would think it would be $52,000 considering the fact that the game was called Action 52, but no, it ended up being $104,000. Now, here's the interesting thing about the contest. You had to beat game number 5 on the NES Action 52, which was food. After you completed it, a code would appear that would make you eligible for the contest. Now, the code was actually programmed in the game. If you beat the game, it would come up with a picture on the screen. You had to take a photograph of this picture and send it to the address listed in the uh, contest information. Here's the deal, though. It was impossible to get to Stage 5, let alone beat Stage 5. Ooze locks up on Stages 2 and 3, so there's actually no way for anyone to even claim its prize. So, more or less, it was a scam. I don't even know if they knew it was a scam at the time, but it was a scam. The other deal is, I don't think that they actually had the $104,000 to actually pay out anyway. So I'm pretty sure it was a big scam consumer ripoff deal. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, Active Enterprises did go to the Consumer Electronics Show in 1994. And they had a pretty decent little booth. Um, they were advertising Action 52 for the Genesis and for the regular Nintendo. Uh, they were also trying to uh, market Cheetah Man 3, which we've never even seen. We've only seen a prototype for Cheetah Man 2. The fact that they were pushing Cheetah Man 3 before the big release of Cheetah Man 2 was uh, fairly interesting. Now, another interesting deal was that they had their own handheld marketed. This thing is really different. It was a handheld unit. And it was supposed to play, I believe, both Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games as well as Sega CD games. Now the interesting thing is uh, in the prototype of this thing, no one's even seen the uh, CD driver or anything like that hooked up to it. The only actual prototype wasn't really a prototype as much as it was a drawing. I was more or less just probably vaporware, something to get the uh, mainstream people interested in it, something to get people talking about the company. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, actually, 
this thing, I, I don't know if it could play Sega CD games or not. I do know that it was supposed to be compatible with the Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. It did have a CD-ROM player. I'm not sure if it was actually meant to be a Sega CD unit or not. The funny thing is that this thing is huge. It's got a tiny little screen at the top of it, this big black bulk at the bottom of it, and then two handles on it that more or less control your uh, buttons. And the actual button configuration looks more like a Super Nintendo than a Sega Genesis. Uh, it looks like they had anticipated to uh, sell it for $500, which is fairly steep. But, um, yeah, that's more or less the big history of this insane company. <laughs> so uh, that's it for your bonus video. We'll see you next time with another episode of Action 104, and hopefully you found this kind of interesting. We'll see you next time.